Wow, I haven't worn this much glitter on my eyes since New Year's Eve, and let me tell you, I didn't miss it. What is up my dudes? Welcome back to my channel. So it is officially March, which marks the start of Women's History Month. All this month, I'm going to try to put out some content related to important women in our community, in our history, in this scene in particular. So today I am kicking that off with some of the best alternative songs named after women and their backstories. I am basically going to blaze through the actual names of the song and just get right into the backstories of them. So here we go. First song, I'm list is a song called Amanda by Green Day. Now, if anyone is a hardcore Green Day fan, you will know that Amanda is the ex-girlfriend of the lead singer Billy Joe Armstrong before he married his current wife, Adrian. At a concert in Austin, Texas, this is months and months in advance from the uh, infamous wow. iHeartRadio Music Festival situation, if you recall. Billy went on stage and said he'd be playing a new song and this was that song. He said that Amanda was his what's her name and that the song was the first time he'd used her name in 15 years, yikes. This girl must have really hecked up or done something wrong cause that is a lot of spite and makes a lot of sense for why you would have a breakdown on stage a few months later, like I love you, but Please, help yourself. This is of course not the only song Green Day has written with the name of a woman in it. Off the same trio, there is also the song Amy, which is of course written about Amy Winehouse who passed away prior to this song being written. Next on my list is the song Amelia by Tonight Alive. So this song is pretty depressing lyrically. Amelia was the best friend of lead singer Jenna McDougal as a child and they sort of just like lost contact throughout the years. She later found out that Amelia had committed suicide and she felt extremely extremely guilty for the fact that she had not spoken to her in so many years because she felt she may have been able to prevent it. This is pretty much a remembrance song to remember the good times they had. This is a incredibly heartfelt song, easily one of the best songs they've written as a band in my opinion. But Jenna, if you're watching this, know that it wasn't your fault, you know, these things unfortunately happen and I think it's really great that she managed to put what she was feeling into words, into a song because that can only help her recover internally from the guilt she's feeling. I wish her the best only. Next on my list is Amelie by The Fame. Amelie is a song that lead man Josh Raven says is about the idea that everyone is born the same, but we become the people we are due to the influence of our surroundings. These influences can affect us both positively and negatively, but only we control the way we react to them. That is so poetic. I am aroused. You can take the arousal part of that any way you want, but I think you know what I mean. Fun fact, the movie Emily is one of my favorite movies and it kind of ties into that. Maybe there was a connection there. I don't know if they're into, you know, foreign films or anything, but the whole movie is basically about this girl who discreetly orchestrates the lives of the people around her. So maybe it ties into that, I don't know. Could there be some subliminal messages there? Detective Sage is on the case. The next song is Antonia by Motion City Soundtrack. Somebody online had said that Justin Pierre meant to write this song actually about multiple people, including their own drummer, Tony. So I'm not entirely sure of what the concrete origin of this song is, but what I do know is that funny enough, every time they try to sing this song live, Justin always manages to mix up the lyrics. I know this because I saw him do it when I saw them two months ago in January, so. There's a little fun tidbit for you, but anyway. The next song is Anna by The Menzingers. The perspective is of course from lead singer Greg Barnett when he started thinking about relationships and how everything clicked. He's quoted with saying, when you move into your first apartment with your partner and how exciting that all is, I wanted to write a song about that and a long distance relationship. I've had a lot of examples in my life and my friends' lives that I based it on, so it all just fell into place. So basically it's about growing on up and having your first real ass adult relationship and how exciting that is because oh boy is that ever exciting. I mean maybe I can't relate because my first real ass relationship was bad but I mean good for him I guess. The next song on my list is Ashley by Escape the Fate. This is of course about an ex-girlfriend. Lead singer Craig Mabbitt's girlfriend Gabby told a fan that the song was originally supposed to be named after her but they chose Ashley because it's a more common name and it's for the fans, interestingly enough. So there's a little bit of tea there. Next song is Carolyn by Black Veil Brides. So the song is one of the earliest songs where the lead singer Andy Beersack had to write the perspective from another person than himself. It is about lead guitarist Jake Pitt's mother who struggled with illness and how 
Jake fell in that situation. Beersack said, when you find out that someone's sick, there's nothing you can really do except say that you're there and going to try to help or do whatever you can. At the end of the day, you can't really cure someone if they're sick. I took Jake's story and tried to put my own perspective on it. The lead singer has to take into consideration the stories of their bandmates because they are the one at the end of the day singing the songs. Next on my list is the song Cassie by Flyleaf. So turns out uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this song is about Cassie Bernal. You might be asking yourself, who the heck is Cassie Bernal? Well, she was a student at Columbine High School who was killed in the massacre that occurred there. It was reported that her killer asked her if she believed in God, and when she answered yes, he killed her with a single gunshot to the head. Later, investigations revealed that the question, do you believe in God, was actually asked to Valine Schnur, a student who survived the Columbine massacre by shooter Dylan Klebold. So, yeah, it's a real dark origin story. The next song is Chelsea by The Somerset. I mean, isn't this just the happiest little love song you've ever heard? The song was revealed to be about lead singer Brian Logan Dale's ex-girlfriend who happens to be actress Chelsea Kane. Later on in 2011, Chelsea Kane was featured on Dancing with the Stars with her partner Mark Ballas, and they did a cha-cha to the Somerset's Chelsea. Halfway done with our list, we have the song Claire by Jimmy Eat World. So this is really just me analyzing this song lyrically because I wasn't able to really find a true origin for this song, but what it sounds like is that this is a song about the end of a relationship in which the lead singer sings is nearly inevitable. It's about the hard choices we have to make in our life and the refusal to see obvious changes occurring. So basically it's about a big old bad relationship kind of tumbling downward which I think we can all relate to. The next song on my list is Dakota by A Rocket to the Moon. This song is about meeting someone for the first time and basically just being like, <sighs> I mean, it's really just about Cupid directly shooting you in the heart and you getting all the feels and only wanting to be with them. That's what we call infatuation, my friends. Don't get it twisted, it ain't love. It might be puppy love, but that's about the much bark you're gonna get for your bite. Next song is Emily by From First to Last. So many people think this song is about a guy who misses a girl, but it turns out via the internet that the song might have a much deeper meaning. The guy misses Emily enormously, but it is impossible for him to see her. Emily commits suicide and leaves him behind. He is waiting until they meet again in heaven. This is especially evident in the line, thunderstorms could never stop me. Now it is the closest they ever are. The next song on my list is Helena by My Chemical Romance. I think we all know what this song is about. This song is partially about the death of the Way's grandmother, Elena Lee Rush, who taught Gerard Way how to paint, draw, sing, gave him his first car, basically like was her world. Fun fact, the white van that appears in the original I'm Not Okay, I Promise video was actually that car. That has another big sentimental meaning that we didn't even know about. The song is dedicated to her as is the entire album. So if you didn't know that, now you know, you can come out from under your rock. Next is Josie by Blink-182. So the song was written by Mark, I think we all knew that, but it's not necessarily directly about a specific ex. It's kind of just like, about the idealized girlfriend, but the song does include references to the band's Unwritten Law and Dancehall Crashers, bands the trio toured with between 1995 and 1996. So it does have a little bit of hidden history there, but not in the way you would think. Next song is Kelsey by Metro Station. So, remember when I talked about Chelsea earlier? Turns out this song was also gonna be named Chelsea, but in a turn of events, Mason wrote this song about a girl named Chelsea. Turns out it was way too personal for him. He couldn't take it. Decided not to release it as a Metro Station song unless they changed the name. So hence why we have Kelsey. There was also a ridiculous rumor going around the internet when this song came out that the song was secretly written about a cat, which I really wish was true, but alas, it's not. Next is Lillian by Plus 44. The name comes from a lady from the Homeowners Association in Mark's old community when he lived in Rancho Santa Fe in California. So really there's like two meanings for this song from what I understand via my research. One could either be about Blink breaking up as a band when Tom left, or it could also be about how Mark's community was beautiful, but all the people there were basically just jerks. I mean, those are very much opposite, so what is it? Will we ever know? Probably not, because the band broke up, unless they reunite. I guess we're not getting an explanation and we just kinda 
gotta play private investigator to figure out what it's really about. So if you have your own theories, tell me in the comment section below. Nearing the end here, we have the song Rebecca by Against Me. This is another song about young love and the excitement that comes from that. It's about that teenage excitement where it's like, we're gonna get married and have kids and live happily ever after, even though we've only been dating for like two weeks, cause that's about the average longevity of a high school relationship, at least in my book, given my track history. But then after those two weeks have passed, you're basically just like, well. Second to last on the list is Sadie by Alkaline Trio. So this song is dark. <laughs> like, I think uh, a lot of people wouldn't guess that this song involved the 1969 Manson family murders, but I mean, here we are. Sadie Glutz is the alias for Susan Atkins, a member of the Manson family and one of the girls who took part in the murder of Sharon Tate and her guests. Susan was one of the most talkative people and she told the story to several people and those accounts eventually helped in landing them in prison. So Sadie wasn't really the brightest bulb in the tanning bed if you catch my drift. So basically this song is a big ol' cup of no in terms of content, but I mean, there's a lot of songs about serial killers, surprisingly, so, you know, sometimes it just be like that. And last on my list is the song Suzanne by Weezer. So Suzanne was a talented A&R assistant at Geffen, their record label. In the long months of limbo between completing the Blue album in October of 1993 and its eventual release in May of 1994, she became a big Weezer supporter, doing her best to keep the guys optimistic about their future with Geffen. As the lyrics imply, Suzanne did in fact help lead singer Rivers Cuomo out with her spare winter coat when he needed one and made plates of brownies to cheer him up. Aw, isn't that cute? Her devotion and aid were perfectly summed up in the song. I agree. So if you agree as well, please give this video a like. That is the end of my list. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like below. Were you surprised about any of the backstories of these songs? Make sure to tell me all about that in the comments section below. Also, if you're new to my channel, hello. How's it going? Make sure to hit the garbage out of that subscribe button, also hitting the bell icon next to it to get the first notice of when my videos go up. I try to upload every Thursday. To all of my subscribers who have been here week after week, thank you so much. It really means so much to me. Well, I'm gonna go write my own angsty song about a girl who won't love me back, so I will see you guys next time. Bye!